hello students today we are going to see the next topic is that is potential difference and absolute potential in the last class we have seen the work done in the movement of a charge from one point to another point in the electric field so to move a charge in electric field we need to do some work or we need to expend some energy that energy will be stored in electric field as a field energy that with respect to that we are going to define a potential difference and absolute potential so the energy is expended in displacing a charge in the electric field of other charges is stored in the field as potential energy so how it is stored the energy is stored in the form of potential energy this suggests that an electric field can be described by energy function what it means because the energy electric field is storing the energy here the energy is stored in the field as potential energy it means that nothing but the electric field is storing some energy so we can consider that electric field as a energy function so one such function is energy required to shift a unit positive charge from one point to another point in static electric field is called as potential difference so a potential difference it is the function it is energy function which is required to move a charge in static electric field so for that let us take one example already we have seen in the last class that is let us take some field lines so let us consider this is your electric field lines the field lines are of like this let us take one a charge a dq dq is at point p1 and we are trying to move from point p1 to from point p1 to point p2 so we are moving a charge from point p1 to p2 so this is the direction of electric field so in this path let us take at some point so let us take this is a point of p at this point the field direction is electric field direction is this one so we have to apply the energy in opposite to it like in 180 degrees to the electric field to move a charge so let us take some distance is dl so dq is moved from from p1 to p2 then the work done is equal to in this moment some work will be done then the differential work done will be minus dq minus dq p1 to p2 from p1 to p2 e dot dl e is your electric field and d is your differential length vector so if i consider if i divide this lhs and rhs part with a dq then here you are going to get dw by dq dw by dq is equal to minus integration over p1 to p2 e dot e dot dl e dot dl if i consider the limit dq tends to zero that is nothing but a small unit charge a small unit charge the dw by dq here dw is nothing but your differential work and dq is your differential charge here the differential work is our work done is a scalar quantity and dq is also scalar quantity if here the both are scalar quantities the result will be here the both scalar quantities are divided there is a division operation if scalar quantity is divided with the scalar quantity then you are going to get a scalar only this is called as the work done per unit charge this dw by dq indicates that the work done per unit charge this work done per unit charge is considered as a potential difference that is indicated with v to 1 so potential difference is nothing but work done per unit charge from here we are moving a charge from point 1 to point 2 so that is given as v to 1 is equal to minus integration over p1 to p2 e dot dl so got my point here the work done per unit charge is nothing but your 
potential difference this v2 one can be written as v2 minus v1 so v2 is nothing but the potential at point p2 and v1 is nothing but the potential at point p1 here dw and dq are the scalar quantities so v21 is also a scalar quantity that is nothing but the potential difference is also a scalar quantity potential difference is also a scalar quantity and dw is independent of so in the last class we have seen that is of work done is independent of the work done will be independent of the path in which path it is going it is independent of the path so if dw is independent of the path here dq is a charge then the resultant v21 will be independent of path because v21 is equal to the work done per unit charge if this is independent of path then the v21 will also becomes independent of path it is chosen so v21 that is of potential difference is also independent of path what will be the unit units for your potential difference that is of work is equal to joules the work is equal to joules and joules per coulomb joules per coulomb are volts so for potential difference the units are joules per coulomb are volts let us define for absolute potential what is absolute absolute potential and how the absolute potential is obtained let us see now let us write for it is absolute potential absolute potential here v21 is equal to v21 is equal to v2 minus v1 if if v1 is equal to 0 if v1 is equal to 0 then what happens v21 is equal to v2 minus 0 which is equal to v2 that is v21 becomes v2 this is called as this v2 is called as absolute potential now in this case the v21 is called as absolute potential absolute potential r this is called as electrostatic potential electro electro static electrostatic potential or it is also called as scalar electric potential it is also called as absolute potential is also called as scalar electric scalar electric scalar electric potential or the potential at point 2 it is also called as the potential absolute potential is nothing but it is a potential at point at point 2 so we got v21 is nothing but v2 what is a v2 v2 is nothing but it is a potential it is a point of p2 it is a point of p1 so here it is having the potential is v2 here it is of potential v1 if v1 is equal to 0 then v21 becomes v2 v2 is nothing but the potential at point 2 so absolute potential is nothing but it is a potential at point 2 so practically how you are going to get v1 as a zero so v1 as a zero is nothing but what do you mean by it v1 equal to zero is nothing but it is a zero potential is regarded as reference point so practically zero potential is regarded as zero potential zero potential is regarded as regarded as reference point reference reference point and earth and earth conductors are assumed to be zero potential earth is considered as zero earth and earth conductors 
so practically earth and earth conductors earth conductors are considered considered as zero potential considered as zero potential so from the discussion v21 is equal to from the discussion v21 is equal to minus integration over p12 p12 p2 e dot e dot dl for example let us consider if q is a point charge if q is a point charge and it is having electric field if q dash is a one more charge that is moved from p1 to p2 that is a point p1 from it is point p2 the distance to the point p1 is let us consider this is your r1 the distance to point p2 is it is of r2 and the electric field direction is this is the direction of your electric field and the distance is it is of r so let us consider here delta q at delta q this is your dl the delta q is moving from p1 to p2 so we can consider this p1 as p1 as the distance is from q to p1 is r1 so here we can write minus r1 that is of r1 to r2 e dot e dot dl this e dot dl can be written as what is the e, e is nothing but electric field intensity so v21 is equal to v21 is equal to minus integration over r1 to r2 r1 to r2 q by 4 pi epsilon r square this is your unit vector in the direction of your r dot that is your dl so already we have seen ar dot dl is nothing but your dr so minus r1 to r2 q by 4 pi epsilon r square this is your dr so if you do the integration finally we will get v21 is equal to minus that is your if i is do the integration and if i substitute the limits so we'll get q by 4 pi epsilon 1 by r2 minus 1 by r1 so if you observe here potential difference potential difference is also it is inversely proportional to the permittivity of the medium and it is depends upon your the length and it is does not depends upon your how it is moving or the path it is taking so q by 4 pi epsilon 1 by r2 minus r1 which can be written as v2 minus v1 so what is a v2 here so v2 is nothing but q by 4 pi epsilon here it is of 1 by r2 that is your 1 by into 1 by r2 and what is the v1 v1 is equal to q by 4 pi epsilon r1 so according to the absolute potential v1 becomes zero when r1 becomes infinity so v1 becomes zero when r1 tends to infinity what do you mean by r1 tends to infinity we have taken q is a charge and here it is moving from p1 to p2 the charge is the dq is a charge it is moving from p1 to p2 the distance from q to p1 is that is your r1 and q to p2 is that is your r2 and we are moving a charge from p1 to p2 that is your delta q or any q dash and this is the direction of your electric field intensity by your q that is your e dash if r1 tends to infinity is nothing but the point p1 is at infinity if the point p1 is at infinity the v1 becomes your zero that is your zero potential so it means that absolute potential is nothing but in the absolute potential case 
we are trying to move a charge from zero potential to non zero potential that is your absolute potential normal potential difference is nothing but v2 minus v1 but in the case of absolute potential we are trying to move a charge from v1 is zero is nothing but that is from a reference point from the refer reference point we are moving a charge from a reference point to the a another point that may be a p2 or p3 or anything so at point p1 at point at point p1 p1 is equal to that is of at infinity then the v1 becomes that is zero so v2 one is equal to v2 minus zero which is equal to v2 so from this we can write v21 is equal to v21 is equal to v2 which is equal to v this can be written as minus integration over that is from infinity to r q by 4 pi epsilon r square into dr so this if you do the integration you will finally you will get q by 4 pi epsilon into r so the generalized equation for your absolute potential is summation over k is equal to 1 to n q k by 4 pi epsilon r that is your 4 pi epsilon r k so this is your generalize the equation for your absolute potential so what is the potential difference and what is the absolute potential i think you got the clear idea so in the potential difference we are trying to move from v1 potential to v2 potential but in the case of absolute potential we are trying to move a charge in the electric field from a reference point to the another point so in the next class we will see uh, equipotential surface or equipotential line